morning, everyone. Welcome to 1111 Downtown. Uh, I'm Tom McDermott, the host for 1111 Community. Listen, this morning we are online only. As uh, you've been getting the notification and the word out there, today, the 13th of June, we are online only. Center for Transforming Lives has a previously engaged uh, event this morning at the ballroom before they knew that we were going to be coming back in person. And so we'll have a couple of those this summer. But uh, today we are online only, back together again next Sunday on June the 20th. And more about that in just a minute. While you're registering your attendance, and if you're visiting, especially we want to know that you're with us. So glad you're here. And we'd like to be able to send you some information and a gift that we have for you as well. So register your attendance, everyone. And then if you feel so inclined, there's an opportunity for giving there online as well. And we appreciate that. Um, Next Sunday, Todd Kirk will be speaking with us. He has spoken with us several times before. We always enjoy it when Todd is with us. So uh, we've got some special music that Sunday and a special guest as well. And then Todd Kirk speaking. I will be back on June 27th. And that will be our, our Sunday, a Pride Sunday we're calling it. It's the end of Pride Month. And, um, and we want to do something unique for that Sunday this year. And so I hope you'll be a part of that as we'll have some special guest artists and uh, myself and then some other folks speaking as well. So I hope you'll be a part of that next. That'll be June the 27th, back at the CTL again as well. And so um, we hope you'll be joining us for that. July 4th will be online again. It'll be a very special interdependence Sunday, as well as we're uh, all celebrating Independence Sunday, well, we're going to do something a little different and celebrate our Declaration of Interdependence. Hmm, go think about that for a minute. But that's a couple of weeks away. So next Sunday, Todd Kirk, the 27th, we'll be back for our special celebration of Pride Month, and then July the 4th. Um, today, Linda and I are going to be in conversation about where we are now. And uh, taking a look back 14 months, back in April and May, as we were thinking about this pandemic and back then thinking this was hump day, we were like five weeks, four weeks into it and thinking, all right, we've got to be towards the middle of this thing. How naive. And uh, since then, what have we learned in the process as we're coming out of this pandemic? Who are our post-pandemic post selves going, going to be? Who are we going to be after the pandemic? That's really the chance, the invitation, the opportunity that I think we are given as uh, people of a deeper sense of who we are and the ground of our being and what that means to be connected to the wider world. How will we be different or will we be coming out of this pandemic? Linda and I are gonna have a fun conversation. Brad's got some great music coming up as well, so thanks for being with us and we look forward to seeing you soon. Good morning. The welcome candle is lit. Hear these words of welcome. Come, come, come whoever, whoever you are, wanderer, wanderer worshiper, lover of leading, Ours is not a caravan of despair. Come, even if you have broken your vows a thousand times, come yet again. Good morning, everybody. This is our prayer today. Holy One, we live and move and have our being in you. Not just one of us, but all of us, no matter what name we choose for you. But we struggle for words to talk about how it is that our lives are bound up together. Your life, our lives for all time. And yet throughout our days, we feel your presence and your perceived absence. We say this with humility because there's so much we don't know. In our not knowing, May we still lean toward life, like plants, like vines, intertwined, reaching down to our roots and up to the light. May we keep in mind the hopes and dreams of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, as we so fondly call it. May we keep alive the hopes and dreams so that bread is shared, forgiveness flows freely, and mercy and justice are the streets that we walk on. With humility and curiosity, may we know both our limited wisdom and our hidden strength. And when that's not clear to us, may we borrow from each other's faith. Amen. Some burn hot, burn my eyes, burn so hot I thought I'd die, thought I'd die and gone to hell. Look for 
the water from the deep blue well. Went to the river, but the river was dry. I fell to my knees and looked to the sky. Looked to the sky as the spring rain fell. I saw the water from the deep blue well. Well, the water from the deep blue well. Good to be with you, Tom McDermott, and look who's with me yeah, this morning. I'm, I'm back. I'm back. Like a big, what's it called? Like a bad penny. I guess. I'm back. I didn't think of you as a bad penny. Yeah. No. Anyway, she's back with us. Um, and I know a lot of you have enjoyed it when we had our conversations. Um, but we're here because the CTL had a reservation already pre-reserved pre for that space. And so uh, we'll have a couple of those this summer. But I thought this would be fun to have a conversation with you the way we used to do. Right. And we were thinking back now that we're moving out of this pandemic and into sort of some kind of new normalcy, um, we thought it'd be fun to look back at where we were, right. back at the beginning you of got, all of this. I've got a clip. You've got a clip of, well, a year ago? A um, little more than, about 14 months ago or so. Wow, okay. Yeah, so back when we got started. I think so at that point we were still in shock that we might be doing this for three more weeks. That's right. We, yeah, I remember thinking three, six weeks just how long. Six weeks is ridiculous. Yeah, so here we are back in 2020, back in April, I believe, is when this one was. So. Okay. <laughs> you did that on purpose. <laughs> I did, I did. Some of you will remember the difficulty, of course, we had adjusting to this new kind of way of being and the technology issues there were some Sundays you'd click on and we just wouldn't be there we wouldn't be there you know mm. or it would just go sh it would just shut down like that but once you started and it just clicked off didn't it uh-huh yeah, yeah. Mm, <laughs> so, okay um but here I really did want to take us back and see where we were we did this series 
It was called Control Alt Delete. Do you remember uh, that? Oh yeah. And that yeah. was back in April and May. Okay. Um, we Which talked, would have been um, we started that right after Easter. Yeah. Okay. And we were talking about our pre and post pandemic selves. Mm -hmm. And Linda and I were thinking that wouldn't it be good to look back at these questions we were asking, mm -hmm. even thinking it was only going to be a few months at most. At, oh, at, at most. most. And then um, and thinking about well, what would we be? Would we have this kind of reset? Mm -hmm. And right. so now we're, we thought we'd show a clip and take a look at, at some of the questions we were asking and see where we are Did now. we? Did we deal with it? <laughs> well, I'm, well, we dealt with where were we then? Where are we now? And mm -hmm. what do we need to be doing? Yeah. Yeah. So let's, we'll just look at this clip. Thank you for looking at it with us. And so we, it just came up. This is feeling, it, it, it's feeling strange and anxious you know and i yeah. and i just said wait a minute are we at hump day are we even at the <laughs> midpoint yeah it needs i need to feel like it's at least hump day you you get such mixed messages yeah and you're trying to find a horizon as you can see where this might be going yeah where are and we and you started sharing with just what you're feeling yeah i mean i a constant feeling of disorientation i i started out being busy I had my to-do list, yeah. and I got some things done, mm -hmm. but busyness wasn't satisfying, and I've got my work to do, and that, that's satisfying, but there was something else, and finally, I, um, I think I hit upon it. I read a quote, and it said, um, sometimes we find ourselves in the middle of nowhere, and sometimes in the middle of nowhere, we find ourselves. Yeah. So, and... Sometimes in the middle of nowhere, we find ourselves. I feel like I'm in the middle of nowhere. And the question that was being sort of gnawing at me, this feeling I had that something was inviting me towards something, had to do with discovering something deeper in me, in our society, in our culture. I, Because when we were talking, I mean, I have similar feelings, but I also have a sense of guilt. Do you? I really do. I have a sense of shame, a kind of guilt... I f there's so much tension and stress yeah. and death and suffering that's on the front line. Right. The, our nurse care friends, our health care friends that are, and doctors that we know that are sharing with us, you know, you don't see it out here. But, right. You know, walking. In our neighborhood. In our neighborhood. Right. right. But it's there. And it's overwhelming. And I feel like I know we're doing good stuff. Mm -hmm. And yet still I know there's people on the front line. That's kind of a reality that we're in. Yeah. That we don't always see so well. There. there are families struggling uh -huh. with their kids and we're in the fourth, fifth, sixth week and you know, trying to fit a trying square peg into a hole. Right. With right? the kids at home. Making making school at home and mm -hmm. life at home and couples and or living alone at home. Right. Which is such an abnormal it's like we're trying to make the abnormal normal. Normal. The impossible, something that's possible. And, and I think I think that very thing is what it felt like it was gnawing at me. Don't try to make it something it's not. It is abnormal. And abnormal is raising a question. So this quote that you that you came across that you shared with me, say it again because it, it really Sometimes we find ourselves in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And sometimes in the middle of nowhere we find ourselves. And I, if we don't honor this, Rob Bell calls this a time of Sabbath. Right. So Sabbath season, and and we we need to honor that. Well, that we that quote got me thinking about something that happened. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. with the computer, right. right? With my computer, right. and it's been happening at all of our Zoom sessions now because I'm in all these different Zoom right. meetings. And right in the middle of the meeting, the Wi-Fi goes out. It's not because the Wi-Fi goes out; my computer goes out. Yeah, it's not. It's just your it's computer. It's just my computer, and 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 there's nothing there. There's nowhere to access Wi-Fi. So I found out online. Here's how you how, here's how you fix this. You hit Control oh. Alt Delete, mm -hmm. and then you hit the off button. Yeah, and then it shuts the computer down. Okay. Then you hit the power button. Computer comes back up. It all restarts. The, the screens are all back up, and it restarts. Same and place. there's the Wi-Fi, right yeah. back where it should be. And, and then, and then it breaks again. It goes out again. Not, not because immediately. Because nothing's changed. It's no. There's no. There's no pattern. It just stops, because nothing's changed. The computer's still the same computer. So, so whatever's broken in the system isn't being addressed. Right. And the resurrection narrative begins oh, yeah. with shalom. Wow, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah. where else does this happen then? I um, mean, well, I mean, think about when before Jesus is crucified and he's talking to his disciples about his upcoming death, he says, peace I leave with you, my own peace I give to you. In other words, I'm leaving you with and bequeathing to you this mission of shalom. Yeah. And then... Um, you know, the, the last days of Jesus as he's going into Jerusalem and he looks out over the city Powerful. and he weeps. Powerful. Yeah. And he said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that I might gather you as a hen gathers her chicks mm -hmm. because you still do not know the ways that make for peace for or shalom. shalom. Yeah, yeah. So I, I love that you said that, um, that idea. Shalom is the trajectory of... God. It's the, it's the sort of the purpose of the kingdom. It is. It's what the kingdom is all about, is right. this shalom and right relationship. And and we were saying how we say this every Sunday in, you know, in traditional the church, the, the passing of the peace. Mm -hmm. And in 11.11, we greet one another. But essentially, we're that's what we're saying. Don't yeah. forget who, who, who we are. are. Yeah. And why you're here. Why we're here. Yeah. And, and what'd you say? Um, it's how we, this is how we invest ourselves. Actually, yeah, I mean, if your life is invested in something. And I'm not sure we always ask the question, what am I investing my life in? Yeah. And if, if we begin to just make that our mantra, we're investing our life in shalom. Right. right. And that begins then, we begin that by seeking to be in right relationship with one another and that building analogy with god with you right love that you with the your creation. neighbor is just, this is a great commandment love your neighbor as yourself yeah. love yeah. god god with all your heart. that's the path of being in right relationship mm -hmm. i love that building analogy because like think about it the way the joyce the way everything connects mm -hmm. what happens if that relationship of one piece to another is not solid well it's destabilizing can i can i give an example yeah, yeah. i was reading a book about um and it included a section on the building of the um, eiffel tower and it said at the bottom of the eiffel tower if the structure was like a millimeter off at the bottom by the time it got to the top the whole building would slant and it would be destabilized oh wow so how important it was that your foundation is is right which is because it's destabilizing it won't sustain yeah and that really gets to i mean essentially that also gets to how we're in right relationship with ourselves with the depth of our the very deep of ourselves Ooh, with oh, our, yeah. call it the ground of our being call wow. it our connectedness with with life at the very ground of our you know, being. i hadn't thought about that but when we're not we are on the verge of de we're destable yeah, you can almost think of Unstable. you can almost think we're a little bit riffing here, but you can almost think of when we're when we are moving about our daily routine, how many times we are thrown off balance. You can almost think <laughs> that of that, works, right? Doesn't it? At, yeah. Somewhere at work, yeah. somewhere on the phone with someone, mm -hmm, somebody mm -hmm. says you've got to go talk to this person, and you're going like, I don't like that person. I mean, how many different ways? Then you access your foundation. You have to. You have to go back to yes, the foundation. You have to go back to your center, to your. To your connectedness with your own sense of deep acceptance and recognizing that deep acceptance mm -hmm. of all of us mm -hmm. and operate out of that place oh, wow. to be in right relationship. If you don't, this is where we see people wrestling with anxieties and depression. And yeah. I mean, some of that's chemical. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that, but in essence, a lot of what we struggle with right. is because we have not gone back to our foundation yeah. and accepted the accepting that what, acceptance, what did you say? that acceptance that idea mm -hmm. that we are accepted we are loved mm -hmm. but that same love and acceptance is for everyone it's for all things god is a part of all of that and we forget that because we're identity oriented identity mm -hmm. politics identity thoughts whatever religion you know it's about my me. opinion versus I mean, your opinion it's, it's yeah. me i'm i my to, ego is right there. to be in right relationship is to let go of that mm -hmm. but to remember we are grounded in this love and so is everybody else and then from that that's point where it gets hard. that's where it gets hard you know what i yeah. think the hardest verse in the bible is when jesus said wherever two or more of you gathered yeah, I'm pretty okay on what my is, own. What did the Gregory <laughs> Bateson, the anthropologist, say? You know, the great anthropologist, uh -huh. he said, it takes two to know one. Oh. <laughs> did it? It takes two to know one. In other words, we don't know ourselves mm -hmm. without relationship. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. to do that, we have to 
be in that kind of right place, that place that says, I depend on you, you depend on me, let's get past the differences and remem remember we are grounded in the same reality. Yeah, but we make a lot of assumptions. So you, you and I on the way over here were talking about critical race theory. Yes. So, and that's the new struggle, I think, for us now as we move past black lives. What were you going to say then? Just asking you, because I'm, I'm still kind of learning what that entails, but my, my vague understanding is at the bottom of that means I, I really need to hear a story that maybe I've never listened to before yeah. or acknowledge that what I have heard and what I've made assumptions about may not be inclusive of a perspective that's quite important. Right. We Our history, we own, we understand from our perspective. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes history is is uh, what history is recorded by those in power. It's yeah. written by those in power. So even and if it's, it could be race, it, it, and it is, it's also socioeconomics. Socioeconomic, yeah. And, um, and, and social, just in, in general, uh, cultural. Mm -hmm. It's written from those who sort of have the power mm -hmm. uh, or, pre or the predominant mm -hmm. viewpoint. And so, you know, we're in Pride Week. Yeah. We're in, in yeah. Gay Pride Week. And, and just, un you know, it occurred to me there's so much I don't know about the history mm -hmm. of, of that experience mm -hmm. and its struggle. Um, it was 1996, I think, when, when, the, when, when uh, the law was passed that you can't discriminate based on, on sexual identity. And um, so, I mean, there's so much we don't know about that history um, unless we had lived in the midst of that. And well, and things that I just take for granted, and then I'm maybe with one of my gay or lesbian friends, and something comes up and I suddenly hear, it never occurred to me mm -hmm. that that might be really difficult for you. Yeah. And, and so, what's that called, being woke? Being woke, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes mostly, it's more like so, a big slap so mostly, in the face. Still mostly asleep here. Um, yeah. But I want to. I'll, I'll, we'll put up on the on the screen here also a couple of resources that I recently came across that some friends shared in terms of, of pride, uh, queer awareness, being okay. more aware of queer history and issues. Um, I think the same was true with Black Lives Matter, right? How many right. how many reading groups that we got involved with mm -hmm. um, just to begin to open up our awareness so mm -hmm. that we understand. And critical race theory is really about how we introduce that at the very ground level of our learning. A wider understanding of historical perspective. And you know what? Who, I forgot who said it, but they said a long time ago, to listen is to love. That's, yes. Yes. I to think listen Victor Frankl and, love. and um, Martin Buber both were yeah. people who said listening is perhaps one of the most sacred acts. Wow. Yeah. But listening requires listening for understanding. Not listening True. just so I can hear you talk until I can talk or, you know, or approaching you from my own perspective listening to understand that's a developed skill right relationship yeah, really means work on that one. get out in some sense it means get out of the way but mm -hmm. in another sense it means connect connect at that deeper place so well i i mean where are we then how far have we come right i think we've the doors just been cracked open it's and, been a little um, over a there's year. been a lot of a lot of tragedy and a lot of pain and a lot of loss in a lot of different areas. Yeah, some um, of us have come out, uh, we acknowledge a lot of you, a lot of us have come out of this with a wound that we didn't have before. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of us have come out with a in, an insight that we didn't have about ourselves or about others. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us have been woke, at least a little bit, in some regards, but the work is not over. So. The whole reference to, wow, it's nice to just go back to the way things were, it's just not true. Right. We are not now who we were then. I think... And for, this is this is the opportunity. Right. That's what, yeah, that's what I was going to say, too. I think this, what we have to take from where we are at this point, 14 months later, is we're still not in our post-pandemic self, because we, we're going to be looking back 10, 5, 10 years from now and go, oh, that's what our post-pandemic mm -hmm. self looked like. Mm -hmm. But I think our invitation now is to, you know, two ears, one mouth, spend a lot more time listening. Listening. And listening, listening with deep intention for this path of shalom. You know, there is a, there is a saying in Celtic theology that, said, that it has to do with listening for the heartbeat of God. Oh, yeah. And if you think about 
the shared heartbeat of all living things. I love that. Then to listen, and to listen deeply, like you were talking about, has to do with listening for the heartbeat or the common human living being Our connection that we have with one another, with the created world. Yeah, absolutely. that's beautiful. Listening for the heartbeat of God. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's a great segue because we're uh, Brad and the band have put together a new music video for us for this uh, for this Sunday. Uh, Manas Yahoo uh, doing one day. What a great segue for that. Thank yeah. you so much for being uh, with me again and being be with here. us. It's really good and, to be uh, here. And bless you all and hope that you have a great week and we'll see you soon. Sometimes I lay under the moon I thank God I'm breathing Then I pray to take me soon Cause I am here for a reason Sometimes in my tears I drown But I never let it get me down So when negativity surrounds I know someday it'll all turn around Because all my life I've been waiting for I've been praying for For the people to say that we don't want to fight no more There'll be no more war And our children will play One day, one day, one day One day, one day, one day It's not about win or lose Cause we all lose when they beat On the souls of the innocent blood drenched pavement on moving though the water stay raging in this space you could lose your way your way it might drive you crazy but don't let it fish you no way no way sometimes in my tears i drown but i never let it get me down so when negativity surrounds i know someday it'll all turn around Down with the head One day we'll all be free And proud to be Under the same sun Singing songs of freedom like One day, one day All my life I've been waiting for I've been praying for For the people to say That we don't want Children will play one day. One day.